My name is Chloe, and today we are going to be talking about syntax and sandwiches. We are going to be taking a deep dive into the tidyverse, exploring syntax, verbs, uh, and how this all goes into our graphing framework. Uh, I have three different examples, so feel free to jump around the video, and I hope you guys enjoy. So the very first thing we're going to do is actually load the tidyverse package. And so the tidyverse package contains many other packages within it, so it contains Stringer, Diplier, Tidier, even ggplot. Um, so that's all we have to actually load today. Um, and so first we're going to start with our beloved Beavers data frame. This is something that we all have access to. It's in base R, so super easy. And you're going to see our two little Beaver <laughs> data frames that show up. So you're going to see that we have Beaver 1 and Beaver 2. And so Beaver 1 and Beaver 2, they are these two different Beavers. And if we look at beaver one, just for fun, that we have the day, the time, the temperature, and the activity, which is a binomial. And so if I wanted to analyze these data, I'd probably want to put them together into a single uh, data frame. And so the very first thing that we're going to do is a very simple call called full join. And so it means what I want you to do is take this first data frame, take the second data frame, and mush them together. And uh, so we're going to say join beaver one and join beaver two. Sweet. So if we do that, uh, I've actually named this whole new thing um, into a new vector, or sorry, a new data frame called test. And you can tell that this test has successfully happened because we have 114 observations and 100, 214 observations. These things have successfully mushed together. Um, and so what happens here is that even in the columns that don't have values, what will happen is that they just get filled with NAs. However, we have a bit of an issue here, right? Uh, the issue is you don't know who Beaver 1 is and you don't know who Beaver 2 is. So by concatenating these data, we actually lost some information that could be valuable to us as biologists. So uh, what to do? Great question. The first thing I would do is actually go back a little bit and talk about who is beaver one and who is beaver two. So what we're going to do is that we're going to actually introduce the dollar sign, which is not for dollar dollar bills. Um, it's actually a way uh, to create a new column. So if we add this dollar sign, when we first look, as you can see within beaver one, we're opening up, we're opening up the sandwich and we're looking at all the ingredients within it, right? Lettuce, tomatoes, cheese. We have day, time, temperature, activity. And so it's already asking us like, what ingredient do you want? And we want to make a new one. We want to add pickles. <laughs> we want to add something new. Uh, we're going to add a new column that we're going to call name. And so we're going to call this new column name. We are inventing this. And so we have to name this beaver, right? We have to give this column a value. So we're gonna name our beaver, I think Jim is a great beaver name. Um, so we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna do a second one as well because beaver two also needs a name. So we're gonna name our second beaver George. Because again, what a great beaver name. And so I'll draw your attention over here um, to these, uh, right now we have four variables, right? Let me actually make this a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, four variables and you're going to see as soon as I run Jim and George, it's going to become five because we're creating a new column. So let's run beaver one and beaver two and all of a sudden five variables. Brilliant. And so now, uh, this is going to make uh, a whole new beaver column. So if we look at this, uh, right now, now we have a new column and beaver one's name is Jim. So this is what we're going to try again. We're going to call it test two and we're going to go through the same same process of doing this full join. We're going to take beaver one and also beaver two and now we are going to use a little something called a pipe. The pipe, what it really is, is this passing on of one information line to the next information line. It's really like creating this Subway sandwich. Someone takes the bread, someone adds the veggies, someone adds the meats, and then someone adds the sauce. You're taking that sandwich and giving it to someone else that has all the previous sandwich stuff 
and moving it down the line. That's exactly what we're doing, right? We're taking beaver one, beaver two, we're doing a full join, and on top of that, we're taking that sandwich of these new beaver things, um, and we're also saying let's mutate it. So mutate is a verb, and it says let's add something new, right? So we have the day, we have the time, we have their names um, of Jim and George. Um, what else can we do? Well, maybe we can add the, the, the mean temperature. Um, this is something I'm creating. Um, so I'm calling this very new column. I'm creating a new column. And I'm saying, hey, call it mean temperature. And I want you to do the mean of the temp, of the temperature that we're already seeing in this data frame. So we can do a bunch of different things with mutate. We can do pretty much anything your mind can create. Anything that happens on the right side of this equal sign is completely up to you to define. There are some predefined things like mean and range and min and max. Let's take a little a little moment to appreciate what we've done here, right? Because at first, these were just two independent beavers. They had no names, we had nothing, we had no idea what was going on. So let's take a graphing break and just play with it. So our data frame right now is called test two. Let's pull up our ggplot, which we love more than anything. Test two is our data frame. Let's define our aesthetics. Uh, if you look at my older videos, you can kind of see what I, how to build this. On the y uh, axis, let's put temperature. On the x, let's put time. And we're going to color it. We can color it based on name, uh, which is uh, that, that variable that we define as either Jim or George. Geom line. Trust me on this one. Um, and we can actually uh, change the size of the line, the actually the width of the line. I've run this already, it's going to be 1.5. You can change the thickness of the line, that's what this is doing. And we also want to do a geom point, so it's the points that we are plotting. Here is our graph that has popped up. As you can see, the colors are really not great, the background isn't great. So I'm just going to take um, a brief second to, to make this graph a little bit better. What I've done here is that I've plotted the points across time, and I've connected those points with the line. Um, and so let's just make it a little cuter because we're already here, so why not? Um, so I'm a big fan of setting the shape um, uh, to 21 because then what you can do is you can define the outside and inside of the dot. So we're going to make these dots a little bit bigger uh, for one. We're also going to make uh, these dots, when you set it to point shape 21, they're like hollow points but you can make the, the thickness of the, the dot larger or smaller. And that's done with something called stroke, which I'm, which I'm doing right now. Um, so I can make the stroke uh, of this point thicker or smaller. Um, and then also, so I have the, the inside of the point is going to be a color, and then I need to fill the inside of the point. And so I'm gonna fill it with a color white. I know I'm going super fast here, but this is supposed to be a data wrangling video. Um, and then I'm going to do a scale uh, color. I'm just going to go with yellow, green, and blue. Um, and then let's just put the theme as black and white. Much better. The only other small trick that I would love to show you guys really quickly is that um, this name uh, to me is tacky and very easily changed. So if we go to the palette to the scale color brewer, we can actually just add, uh, we can rename the legend. And let's just call it um, Beaver ID. That seems like a logical name. You're either Jim or George. Here we are. Um, the reason why this wrangling is so important. So again, concatenating these two data frames into a single data frame. Uh, we finally have this Beaver ID. We can color it based on these individuals. We can see that George is doing something Jim was not. Uh, his body temperature was different throughout the day. This could be interesting from a biological perspective. That's one of the values of data wrangling. So let's move on. All right, the next thing we're going to be doing is loading up our data set called Iris. And so again, on base R, everyone has Iris. Um, so we're going to create a new object. We're going to call it Iris1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Iris, and again, we're going to pipe it, right? So we're going to take that data frame, and we're going to start manipulating it. Um, and we're going to use this other call called group by, and we're going to group by species. And so what this means is that it takes all of the next information that we're gonna manipulate it with, and it's gonna do it just for species chunks. So in Iris, let's remember that there's several species. There's, there's Versicolor, there's 
the Sutherland, Virginica. And so that means that for all of our future uh, manipulations of the data, it's going to do it within those chunks because we said group by that chunk. Um, and so when you're dealing with these factors, that can be a really good thing to do because often as biologists, we're looking at things by certain categories or groups. So we're grouping this by the species. Fabulous. And we're piping that to our next hand. We're moving the Subway sandwich down the line. Um, and so we're going to mutate again, right? We're going to make this new column. And so what cross does is it applies this function across multiple columns. Very well named. What do we want to do? Well, we want to take, let's say we want to center our data. Um, so you can only center continuous variables. You can only center numbers, right? Um, you can't center a factor. Um, so we need it to be only for these columns. How do we specify these columns? Well, one thing you could do is say column one through four. So you could do one with a colon through four. So one, two, three, and four. But we can do something even cooler, um, which is defining the columns. So we can say where uh, is numeric. Um, so actually, we're going to say look at all of the columns where the numbers, where, where the columns are numeric. So if we actually look here, all the things that fit num, N-U-M, numeric, uh, that's what we're defining here. So look at across every single column where the data is numeric. Okay, cool. What do you want to do? Well, this is where some more information is, is coming in here. We're going to start with a tilde. That means that we're going to start a function. Um, in base R, that's literally the term function. Um, and so here in the tidyverse, we just use this this function with a tilde. So it just means I'm going to start uh, telling um, the, the, the data how I would like it to be manipulated. So I would like um, every value within this column. So this value can be captured by a point or point X. Take this cell value, uh, subtract the mean um, if we're centering our data. What we'd, it would be doing is taking this cell value, so for example, 6.2, and then subtracting the mean of the sepal link within this versicolor species group. Okay, run this as is, but it would overrun all the columns you currently have with that information. And I don't really want to do that. I think I want to add those columns after. I just want to see the manipulation happen. So what I'm going to do is actually make new columns. And so I need to name those columns, right? Um, and there's a really easy way to do that. So again, this thing called dot names. What do you want these columns to be named? Well, this is when we're going to use our super duper curly brackets. Um, and so curly brackets allows the entire object to be passed as is um, to the next function. So if I say the curly bracket, um, and again, this has to be named, so this should be um, a string here. Uh, we're going to name it the column. And so the column would then take a uh, sepal link or sepal petal link, you know, whatever this column was named. We're, we're saying take that and then um, give it a new name. Let's say center, right? Because we centered our variable. We have all of our original data, a sepal link, sepal width, all that thing. And then look, sepal link underscore center. Because remember, that was the call, the call in the curly brackets that we said just keep it. Um, and then we have all of our new measures. We can, we can do more than that. Um, one thing that's, I think, the bane of everyone's existence, it's so hard to understand at first, but I swear it's actually so worth it, is pivot longer and pivot wider. Let's just look at Iris and think about why we would use pivot longer. So imagine we can group all of these measurements into its own column, right? So we can group all of these data within its own column and then have all of the values next to it. We are going to name this new thing. We've had iris1 and iris2. Let's just call this poor, this poor data frame iris3. Um, and so again, what we're going to do is we're going to take iris, our original data, data frame. We're going to use our beloved pipe and we're going to pivot longer. Look at this. It already knows. It already knows what I want. Um, and so when we pivot longer, we have to say what columns we want to pivot longer. So again, here, what I want to do is I want to take 
length, width, length, width, and I want them to become their own column. Species is fine the way it is, right? I, I want that to be column the way it is. So we have to tell our, actually, we, we, we like species. Don't, don't mess with species. So what we say for don't is usually a minus, or sometimes we use an excla exclamation point, and we'll get to that. But we're gonna say, uh, please don't use species. Um, and so the reason why I'm using a C here is I'm, I could concatenate a list. Uh, that's just me, again, my old habits coming in here. And the reason why is because uh, I could say minus species and have it be fine. But if I had several columns that I wanted uh, to not be included here, that C to concatenate is required. So what do we want the names, the names of these columns to go to? How about um, just variable? Um, they are the variables we measured. But then we have to think about what do we want all those values, that 5.1, 4.9, da da da. Uh, what should those be called? So where should the values uh, go? I feel like measure is good. Now, it has gone from 150 to 600. That isn't because we created more data. We took that data and we flipped it the other way. So look, no longer do we have um, sepal length width all of that um, over here on our columns now it's all bound within a new column name that we called variables so let me show you why this is so cool by actually applying this to taking a brief graphing break and applying this new pivot longer data frame into the ggplot framework um, so this is a really great way to be able to combine data and look at data I don't know I don't know what your research question is but these things can be interesting. So that's how to do it. For our last data frame we're gonna be messing around with is this religion data. So it is under our base R, under relig um, underscore income. So we immediately kind of see this religion, which is a factor and it has all of these different counts for how many people answered and what money they made. Um, I think you can kind of see maybe where I'm gonna go with this, that these this information definitely needs to be pivoted longer, right? We want all of this to have its own column, and then we want the data to be kind of on the side. In our new new um, data frame, we're gonna call it uh, Fredge, that's fine. Um, and so we're gonna take <clears throat> religion income, and we're gonna pipe that, and we're going to go back to our pivot longer. Uh, remember, we don't wanna pivot all of the columns, we just wanna pivot these weird ones here the one that's actually religion is fine i'm going to say please don't um look at religion <laughs> uh we want our names let's say let's go to income uh because that's the income people are making and those values um that's like how many people responded we'll just say uh values um to and we'll just say please uh just call that uh responses have our income now and income is like this and we have other responses that people gave and that's all well and good however um, I am a little bit uncomfortable with this income as a character like what does less than 10k mean for R it doesn't have much value here's another reason why I like to convert these things into factors because now as a factor I can look at the levels and I can say, give me all the levels of reg, uh, and then we're opening up the sandwich, uh, and um, income. So let's look. What, what does that even look like? Interesting. This doesn't mean anything if I wanted to code uh, perhaps uh, a model or something. Tidyverse has an amazing, amazing call called case when, which allows you to do multiple if else like statements nested one to the other to the other to the other and because we're going to make a new column and we're going to call it incomes uh, with an s so this makes it into something else uh and so we're going to say this amazing call called case when and so what it means it's pretty much if else right so if uh the income which is our original thing here income so if income equals and so again we have to do equal equal because it's a logical statement because it could equal more it could equal less it could equal a lot of things so if it equals and let's just copy this directly because this way there's no errors typos 10k 
Then we're going to bring out tilde again because it's our little function. Give it zero. Uh, I'm assigning this numeric thing because uh, maybe we could say then if the income of 10 to 20, then we would assign it 10. You know, so then if it equals this, then if it equals this, then it should equal 10, right? And so on. So I have kind of cheated and already done this and just say, okay, you guys get the gist. 20, 30, 40, 50, 75. All, all of the answers are now defined, okay? So we are giving if else statements to all of these answers. So let's just run that. You know, if it's less than 10, it's zero. If it's 10 to 20, it's 10. And so now we can order things numerically. That these, you can do these crazy nested if else statements um, that are way more flexible than your traditional if else. And so this case one is really quite a powerful tool uh, to be using uh, with the, in, within the tidyverse. So the final thing that we're going to be doing is practicing some filtering, and we're also going to be learning about uh, a really handy in pipe, uh, which pretty much looks inside the sandwich and pulls out additional information. Um, so let's let's just jump right into our final our final chapter here. So we're going to name this data frame reg one. And so the first thing that we can do is actually look at something uh, called we can select uh, rows by their values, and so we can do this by looking at the top n, so the top ten or 20 religion based on income or something like that. But we can also do fractions, which I think is more um, pertinent here. So what we're gonna do is look at the top 30%, let's say. Well, we see the top 30% of, um, of incomes based on every single religion. Another way we could do is actually pull up the verb of filter. And so then we can filter these different uh, columns based on logical statements. So we could filter by responses and just keep the responses that are not equal to, because that's a logical statement, uh, zero. So here again, if we go to reg one, now that we've established that filter, we can see the smallest response here is one, uh, but there's nothing, all the zeros have been removed. That logical statement, we could of course do something that's greater than, sorry, greater than zero, or if you wanted to include zero, we could say greater than or equal to zero, something like that. So uh, there are many different ways that you can format this. The other way that we can filter is actually based on the strings themselves. So, and what we're gonna use for that is um, str detect. So string is str and detect. Uh, and so there we can say, for example, look at the column of religion and give me anything that contains a J it's only going to be religions that contain a J. Let's look at all the religions that end in C. And so the way to say, look at it at the end is to have a dollar sign. So then if we run that, look at all the religions that end in C, what happens here? Well, agnostic, Catholic, all the religions that end in C. Uh, if you wanted to look at the start, you would do a little, uh, a little hack. Uh, this means looks, look at all of the religions that start with C. But then again, remember here, it would have to be a capital C, right? Because it's the start of a sentence uh, and all of the religions here are coded with capital letters. You can also add an exclamation point here. And so remember, like I said earlier, exclamation points mean no. So this means, please, I do not want any religion that starts with C. The final thing I wanna show you guys today is the in pipe. And so those work um, for any kind of vector of values, could be factors, uh, that then you want to take levels of that factor. Our variable religions, it's a factor with 18 levels. And so what we can say is, hey, look inside this factor and here, give me certain levels. So remember here, I am using a C because I'm concatenating, I'm creating a list of things that I want. And that list can be one item or 15. Uh, so let's ask for Hindu and Mormon and I don't know, a third one, uh, Jewish. Of course, we can of course use the same rule of the exclamation point, use that, and then you'll get everything but. That's enough tidying for one day. Uh, I hope that you guys were able to learn something. If there's anything that isn't clear or that you'd like to see expanded more, I'm happy to uh, create more content about how to wrangle data. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you and keep coding.